Welcome to Pipes Around the House. If you've got a ceiling or wall with flaky paint like this, then I'm going to show you exactly the products and methods that I use to get it back to normal. So after pulling a few small bits of flaky paint off my wall, this is pretty much how it looked before I began repairing it. And to start this job, we need some wall scrapers like this. And if you need these tools, I'll put links to those in the description section below. And the plan here is to remove any flaky paint. You don't want to go so hard that you're removing everything off the wall, but you want to ensure that anything that is loose and not adhering to the wall is removed. Now in your case, you may have a really small patch and that's it, job done. Unfortunately with mine, it seemed to be going on and on. Obviously, if you get to the point that half your wall is in this state, then it may be worth thinking about replastering the whole wall. But if you end up with a fairly small section like I did then it's well worth the hassle. If you do fancy plastering a whole wall I've done a video on how to do this and a link to that video will pop up on the screen now. Then I take this sanding block, this one is a Spear and Jackson medium grey but it doesn't really matter what you use, this is just what I had available. I go around the edges of the paint giving it a light sand, this just reduces any sharp edges eliminating the chance of the paint flaking off when we go to the next stage of the process. Now I give the wall a quick going over with the Henry Hoover to remove any remaining debris and now we can start to apply our first product. Now this is called Peel Stop, it's a clear binding primer that seals cracking and crazing, it glues down old paint edges and binds chalky substrates. It's water based for interior and exterior use. It dries in one hour and can be painted over in two hours and you can clean it off using only soap and water. So I open the tin by levering the lid off using my flat bladed screwdriver. I then use the same screwdriver to give it a good stir. I then use my brush to wipe the excess primer off the screwdriver back into the tin and then use some wet wipes to give the screwdriver a clean. And using the peel stop is as simple as taking a brush and painting it on the wall around the edge where the paint meets the plaster. Work your way around covering all the edges of the paint. This will now seal down all the edges of the paint in preparation for the next part of the process. Then we can put the lid back on the tin, seal it down and wait for it to dry. So the next product I'm going to be using is this Tupret or Tupre fine surface filler. If you know how to pronounce it, please let me know in the comments section below. And this product is for filling up to one millimetre in depth and is ready to paint in eight hours. It adheres to paintwork, it's easy to sand, no need to spot prime and will not flash or grin. So the filler can be used on gypsum plaster, plasterboard or drywall, old painted surfaces, any type of filler, cement and concrete. For preparation, ensure the substrate is hard, cohesive, clean, sound and dry. And there's no need to prime the surface before application. To apply the filler to the wall, I'm using a plaster plastering hawk, a filling knife and this Ox Ultra Flex trowel. I'm using this trowel as it's got very fine edges, it's extremely flexible and I already have it available. It's also wide enough to cover the damage patch on my wall. You really don't need a trowel like this for the job, you can just use a cheap set of filling knives like these which I'll show you in a minute. So with the walls all prepped and the peel stopped dry, I now open my tub of filler. I then use the filling knife to remove some filler and place it on my hawk. So again I take the filling knife, I use it to apply the filler to the wall and then spread it flat. But after a few minutes of doing this, I realised that the patch is a bit too big for the filling knife, so I moved to the trowel. I used the trowel in exactly the same way I would for plastering, and rather than stretch this video out, if you want to see how to do that, I'll put a link to a plastering video on the screen now. But in summary, I'm using the filling knife to put the filler onto the hawk. I then take the filler off the hawk onto the trowel, spread it on the wall, covering the damaged area. From my personal experience of using this product, I found it's best to get it as flat as possible first time, rather than leave it raised for sanding later, like when using other products. This is why it's good to use a trowel or filling knife that's slightly wider than the area you're filling. That way you can flatten the filler in to the exact height of the surfaces either side of the damaged area. Then once I filled a particular section of wall with the filler, turning the trowel at a slight angle, I drag across the wall ensuring it's nice and flat, trying to keep it level with the painted surface either side of the damaged area. If you've got a smaller patch of wall to repair then you can just use a smaller set of filler knives like these and I'll put a link to these in the description section below. You use these in very much the same way as the trowel, just removing the filler from the hawk and then spreading it across your damaged section of wall. And again, your damaged section of wall will ideally be narrower than the width of your filling knife, so you can flatten the filler into the height of the painted surface on either side. But here, you can see the advantage of using a larger trowel. If you notice your filler is going a bit hard and crusty on your tools, go and give them a wash and continue with clean tools. I've actually finished now, so time to put the lid back on my filler. So a quick tip, if you don't want your filler to go off inside your tub, it needs to be sealed correctly. And to do this, just ensure this lid is pushed right down. You can see by there, you might think it's closed and it's not, so just make sure you give it a really good squeeze. I'm happy now, it's nice and flat and nice and smooth, and you can see here the patches I filled off camera. Now we just need to leave it to dry. So having left the wall to dry for about four hours, I'm now going to use a sanding pad I used earlier. But before I do that, I need to put on my mask as the filler will produce fine dust when sanded back. And again, don't forget I'll put links to all the tools and products I use in the description section below. So I just very lightly work my way around the edge of the filler using the sanding pad. I have a quick feel over with my hands. If I can feel any obvious raised edges, I continue to sand. Have another feel around. Do this over the whole patch I've repaired. Then once I'm satisfied it's all 
flat, it's job done. We have one last final clean with the Henry Hoover, leave it to dry for a few more hours, and then it's ready to paint. So you can see now with some cheap products and a few simple tools, repairing flaky paint is a relatively simple job. If you have found this video useful, can you please give it a like, and if you haven't done so already, can you please subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon for regular notifications. I've been Pouse around the house. Ta-ta, farewell.